G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. I've got a box from Dell RC. The other people who make props, I like their props. Um, they also made this fantastic little mini quad, the 180, that I really enjoy as a, as a sort of a uh, middle of the range mini quad. This flies very nicely and I'm using it as a test bed at the moment for the Runcam Night Eagle. I've just put that on there. I'm going to try and get some footage this afternoon of daytime and some nighttime flying. But of course, um, I have to fly inside because we can't fly outside in the night due to the rules. But there you go. I mean, I like this little quad. It's got lots of little features, a unibody. It's really, it just hasn't broken. It flies nicely. So there you go. Um, <clears throat> so Dell have sent me some new stuff in a box, including some ESCs and a new frame. So as we do on RC Model Reviews, let's open the box, but we don't unbox it because I've already done it. No unboxings here. They gave me, oop, crash bang. They gave me some of these BLS 25 amp ESCs and they look quite good. They are for two to four cell lipo. They say HV. Well, two to four cells is not really HV, but you know. So I'm going to try those. They sent me four. I wish they sent five because you know what happens when you get four ESCs for a quad. Yeah, guaranteed one of them is going to go, even if it's the best quality because not everything's perfect. Right. So they also sent me another box and we will unbox this one. Oh, I've already opened it. Look, it's the Dell RC XR215 Plus. Ooh, what a handful that is, eh? And there we are, QR code for those playing along at home. Let's have a look inside. Ooh, look, most, the first thing to note is it comes with an assembly schematic. There you go, those are your instructions. That's it, it's all you get. But I mean, hey, these things, it's not rocket science, is it? I'm sure we can work out how to put this together. I think, uh, yeah, there we go, yeah, yeah, it's all clear as mud. Um, right, what do we get here? Um, I'm gonna cut to the chase first. This is the core of the whole thing, it's a PDB. Let's pull in a bit tighter, have a close look at that PDB. Right, we're looking at it pretty close because there's a lot on there. There seems to be, just looking at it, there seems to be a couple of power supplies here. Um, probably a 5 volt and a 12 volt, I'm not sure. Because there's no instructions. It doesn't give me any, the assembly schematic doesn't tell you anything at all about this PDB. So you're flying on your own. Maybe there's instructions on the Dell website. I don't know, I haven't looked, but I will look. And you might think, well, okay, but what's all this other stuff on here? What's this chip here and this chip here? Well, it also has an OSD on it. Woohoo, how about that? Who'd have thought that? Uh, it has an OSD, so, and it's the sort of the minimum OSD, I think. And so you'll be able to see all your various bits and pieces. Now, I'm looking to see if there's a current shunt on here. Um, I don't see one. Is there one on the back? Oh, there is, look, on the back side, there's a current shunt. So it's going to give you your current measurements and you'll be able to do things like total milliamps consumed. So yeah, it's a good, it's, it's probably a pretty good OSD. My real concern is that if we look at this, we've got um, heavy current, heavy current, heavy current, heavy current, power supply, power supply, and we've got an OSD stuffed right in the middle of it. So I don't know, I will be looking to see one of the concerns I have with these highly integrated systems, and I think the was it the uh, Holy Bros, the only ones that don't seem to have had this problem, is that you end up with a lot of noise coming from these really high current areas and the power supplies and stuff like that, and getting into the video signal via the OSD. Now you saw the B Rotor 130 and the, what was it, the DYS Lightning. They both suffered from enormous amounts of video noise. It, unacceptable to me. I just can't fly them with that much noise on the video. So. In that regard, I'm hoping that uh, Dell have done this right. If they haven't, well, you know, I won't be flying this either because it just doesn't make sense to put all that super sensitive video circuitry amongst all this super noisy power circuitry. It just makes no sense at all. Um, maybe they should go like, I think, Foxia and put an OSD in the camera. That seems like a great idea. Run cam, you could do that too. Put your OSD in the camera where it's well away from all the noise and it's right up there where the video signal is created. Why not? I don't know. Anyway, just a thought. So there you go. That's it. It's nicely made. It's gold plated through plated holes. It's uh, it's not a thick board. Let me get my calipers out. And because this is a PDB, um, and it's also semi-structural member, it's one and a half millimeters thick, for, and it's fiberglass. So it's the equivalent um, of one mil carbon, really. But again, you don't want to use any fiberglass circuit board as a structural member because the tiny little copper traces on there will be broken under the stress of flexing. So let's uh, take a look at what else we get though and we'll talk about this PDB as a structural member again in a moment. Now it comes with those wonderful little feet that I love so much because they protect the bell of your motor if you're having an impact, or one of the arms impacting, and they give you something to land on, give you some feet. Feet has been a, have been a problem for mini quads for ages and people have used standoffs and they bend and break and you know, but they seem to be about the best solution to that. You get some battery straps, there you go. Everyone needs battery straps, can't have too many of those, very nice. Um, some screws, because how else are you going to hold it together? Spit will not be strong enough, you have to use the screws, bolts. Um, or we get some cables for that uh, PDB. One of the things, as I'll go back to this for a moment, it's got these little micro-connectors on here. Oh, I'm not a great fan of those. 
I don't see any problem with actually soldering your wires directly to the PDB. Oops, get into shot again. I, I like to have my wires soldered to the PDB. These little connectors here got fine little pins. If you're really out there and you're trying to push a plug in in the, you know, in the heat of a competition, it's easy to bend those pins. And anything that plugs in can fall out. Doesn't matter how nicely it seems to fit originally. And if you break a wire on one of these little connectors, you're buggered because you can't. I don't have a crimping tool for them. I don't know anyone that carries a crimping tool for those. You can't solder to them. So the whole damn thing goes to hell in a handbasket. I'm not a fan of these little connectors. I've, we've survived for years without them. I think we could survive a hell of a lot longer. So, I, you know, okay, that's, we'll just try it out and see how it works. But they wouldn't have been my choice. Now, you get some LEDs. Whoa. There's one thing that the 180 didn't have. I noticed this frame. It didn't have any LEDs. And I haven't put any on this one. So i have probably been really stupid flying it with a night camera because if I lose it, I'll never find the damn thing at night. It doesn't have any lights. Um, yep, yeah, LEDs. Uh, what else have we got in here? I don't know what those are. And this construction schematic doesn't, doesn't, there's some grommets in there, but there's some little aluminium pieces as well. No bleeding idea. I'll find out when I go to put it together. That's okay. Um, XD60 lead, pre soldered at this end, um, and ready to solder to the PDB at that end. Uh, what else have we got in here? Our oh, standoffs. These standoffs are wasted standoffs. It doesn't mean that they're, um, you know, wasted. It means that they're thinner at the middle and they've got knurled ends. That's quite good because when you're tightening up the screws, you've got something to hold on to without using your pliers and scratching all the anodizing. Uh, although I would probably like to have seen them not so much wasted because one of the modes of failure for all these plate type things where you've got a top plate and a bottom plate is the standoffs bend. You have a really hard crash and the standoffs will bend and if they're thin in the middle they're more likely to bend. I don't care about a little extra weight. I'd rather see that same thickness carried all the way through so that in the event of a crash I'm not having to replace the damn standoffs because they all got bent out of shape. Now to the carbon. To the carbon. This is interesting. Here we go. Um, we have a bottom plate. There we go. That is. Let me caliper that up for you. That's a two millimeter carbon plate. Looks like reasonable good quality carbon, the sort of stuff you find in most of these things. Um, yep, it's, you know, what can I say? It's two millimeter carbon plate. That's it. Now I was looking and I was thinking, well hang on, hold on. Woo hoo. How do the arms, normally with a, an X quad like this, the arms are sandwiched between two plates. And I know on the Shuriken they've got a carbon plate top and bottom. And I thought, well, the, where's, the, where's the plate that sandwiches the arms on? I mean, and I looked at the box and there isn't any. I looked at the assembly schematic and I found that this is the plate that holds the arms on. It's the PDB. We don't want the PDB as a structural member. Honestly, no, we don't. Please, don't make it a structural member. But they've made it a structural, semi-structural member because obviously there is the, uh, the carbon plate below. But once you throw an arm on here... And these arms are a funny shape, aren't they? I haven't actually looked to see which way they go. Which way do they go? No bleeding idea. There's a little hook on the end here. What's that for? Where's the assembly can schematic? Um, does it interlock with another arm? It's not immediately obvious. Hopefully all four arms are the same because then you don't have to buy left and right and up and down or whatever. Um, can't go. Does it go that way? Must go that way. Hmm. Anyway, I'll look at the I'll look at the book. It's not really obvious, actually, on the construction skim. Um, no, they go this way. I did see. Look, there we go. So they go that way and that way. So that provides spacing for the PDB because otherwise the components on there would basically hit the bottom plate. So the PDB goes on here. Uh, but I'm still not happy because there's going to be flex on the bottom plate and the top plate will be absorbing some of that flex. And just regular flying around, not an issue. But you hit a tree with an arm, I'm not so sure that it'll be you know, totally robust. It'll probably be strong enough. You know, I'm always a pessimist, but we'll see what happens. I'll keep a close eye on that. So the arms provide the spacing that stop the components from banging into that plate. That's all right. Uh, I would just like to say, I've been not a fan of having, why didn't they just put another plate on there just to give us that structural strength and then put this on top of that again? It's only a tiny bit of carbon. It would make a huge difference to the durability, I think, of this quad, but I could be wrong. We'll have to try it out and see. So you get four arms. They are all the same three and a half mil carbon. Was it three and a half or four? I've forgotten already. Oh man, I hate it when I get old. And now I've lost my calipers. Just to remind myself, it is three and a half. Well, actually, no, it's 3.2. 3.3. So it's, um, yeah, eighth inch imperial. <laughs> How does that work? Is it really 3. Point? No, this one, oh, okay, let's have a look. This one is three, it's a bit of a worry, isn't it? Quality control. This one is three and a half, as you can see. The needles come up to the five there. This one is. Same one, 3.2, so 3.25. So there's not a lot of consistency between these. And since these are used as a spacer, if one's higher than the other and lower than the other, it's going to put a bit of extra stress on that PDB because you're going to have a, you know, it's going to be supported at different heights and different corners. So it could put a twist on the board. It's a bit of a concern. Um, I 
don't know. Let's try them all. Yeah, let's see if they're all different. This one is, that's 3.3. That's 3.5. 3.6. Oh, that one's three point. Oh, let's go back. Yeah, three point seven. Um, where's the quality control, dear Dell? And that's three point three again. So, hmm, we've got quite a variance in the thickness of those arms, which is, means that, that that this PDB is going to be on a bit of a twist, or the baseboard will be on a twist, and the arms might not be perfectly level. That's something small, but it obviously different bits of carbon. This was cut from different bits of carbon. They're not sort of batching the arms from a single sheet, it's, or the sheet itself was. Um, thinner at one end than the other. Mm, I haven't seen I haven't seen that before, but I haven't checked it before, so maybe it's common. We don't know. Here's the top plate. <sighs> Excuse me while I scream. What are all these bloody holes in it for? How much? How many grams are we saving through here? And how much extra strength are we losing because of these holes? And let's do a quick let's do a quick measure. Uh, uh, it's time to do a measure. I'll do this again. Uh, how wide is that? That is. Let me have a look on my calipers. That is about 34. Yeah, 34 millimetres wide there, across there. But let's take out the hole in the middle, see how much we've got. So it becomes, what is that? It becomes 10.7 um, plus 10.7, which is obviously got to be 21.4. So we've gone from, yeah, from what was it, 30, 34. So, so we've lost that big gap in the middle. Let's go. Oh. I'm old and the day's getting on. So we have actually lost something like uh, 13 millimetres of strength. It might as well only be 30 millimetres wide. Oh, I don't know. You mean, really? Seriously? And even when we get up here, we've got some quite thin bits here because we've got this, we've got this little slot in here for a vertical. And the stress lines are all there. You can see them for yourself. It's, it's probably not an issue again, as I say. But if you've got a battery on top and you land upside down, it can become an issue. Why don't they just make it tough? I know I've actually had to replace. The weakest part of this machine was the same thing. This fretwork, this lace doily on the top here. I broke a top plate landing upside down. Because look, they've done the same thing. They've cut massive great holes through here. Just snapped. We well, didn't snap it. So I cracked and got all soggy through there. Had to put a new plate on it. So please, please, people, don't turn your carbon into a lace doily. This is probably better than the 180, but it's still, there's no need for it. If you lift that flat, it'll give you more area to put rubber, to put cushioning for your battery, because there is no rubber cushioning for your battery. It's one thing I really like to see in quads. I was pleased to see that in the Shuriken. They gave a rubber mat here to hold your battery from sliding, and it provides a bit of, um, bit of impact protection if you have a landing really hard. There you go. So that's basically it. Oh, no, one more thing I didn't cover. There is a camera mount system. This is quite clever actually, I quite like this bit. They have a camera mount system and they have, because the quad has two plates on it, like this, which probably line up something like this, and then the camera plates go in here, you can see where the holes bolt down there, bolt up there, so you can swivel your camera to a different angle. That's quite nice. Um, of course it requires a lens mount, there's a big one and a small one, I don't know what's going on there, why well, they've got two big one, two different ones. But um, a nice little innovative method of mounting a camera. Um, although I think most of us use HS1177s or similar cased cameras now, and I don't know that that's going to be any better than the bracket underneath, but we'll find out. Fantastic. So there you go. Thank you, Dell, for sending that in. Um, overall, I, there's some areas I'm not that happy with, but mostly it looks not too bad. We will build it. We will crash it a lot, and we'll see if my concerns regarding um, some of the structural issues are sound. So in the meantime, if you've got questions, comments, anything to say on the subject of this little mini quad then please let me know in the comment section provided by YouTube. Thanks for watching, bye for now.